Welcome back to BNC Live. COVID cases across the country are dropping, which means the nation is moving closer to returning to a sense of normalcy. Let's take a look at the latest figures. Johns Hopkins University is reporting more than 33 million confirmed cases in the U.S. and more than 589,000 deaths. Globally, there have been more than 166 million confirmed cases and more than 3 million deaths. But there's a light at the t end of the tunnel, folks. COVID numbers continue to decrease as more people roll up their sleeves. The CDC says more than 285 million vaccines have been administered and at least 61% of adults have received at least one dose. The CDC says although people are still lining up for the shot, average daily vaccinations are down nearly 50%. And Americans Prisons, jails, and detention centers are reportedly lagging behind in vaccination rates. Reports show refusal rates in prisons have been high, and many inmates say they mistrust both the vaccine and authorities who try to persuade them. According to the New York Times database, prison inmates are three times more likely to contract and die from the disease. This includes black people who make up a large portion of the inmate population and who have disproportionately been impacted by the virus. Infectious disease expert and virologist Dr. Lane Rowling is with us now to talk about this. Good evening, Dr. Rowling. Welcome back to BNC. It's good to see you. Hello, Brittany and staff. Super fantastic Sunday night. Hello. So, Dr. Rowling, health experts are concerned that prisons and detention centers are lagging when it comes to vaccinations. We know these folks who work with the inmates go back home to their communities, the stores, and everything else, you know, after they leave work. How does this in turn impact the spread of the coronavirus? Well, what it does, it continues to uh, be a source of infection for the society. I mean, you, when you think about what happened initially a year ago uh, when this, the SARS COVID uh, uh, pandemic really took off, one of the most vulnerable uh, population were people that were incarcerated, prisons, jails, and stuff, and they were a, a significant source of the infection. So you can imagine now uh, folks that are in prison are, and are detained being the source of the infection for not just for the general population, but also for society. And so as long as these uh, folks are in this type of vulnerability, they're going to always be a source of infection. And that is why it's very important that when we talk about trying to mitigate and contain the SARS-CoV-2 pandemic, you know, one of the, the population that we have to make sure that has a uniform policy is to make sure that our, our protected people, people that are incarcerated, have the same full vaccination programs, uh, access to medication, access to education, etc. If not, what happens is it's always going to be a, a source of infection. So you can imagine somebody going into the system can get infected and die. You can imagine uh, one of the, the prisoner guards or the correctional officer bringing the disease to contain individuals in a, in, a, in a prison system or somebody's being released home to their families that they can be the source of the infection. So at the end of the day, you know, it's a significant problem. And this is going to be one of the lagging uh, reasons why uh, we're still going to have a continual infection of the SARS virus in our population. And Dr. Roland, just to leave in a closer look at the numbers, reportedly only about 40% of federal prison inmates and half of those in the largest state prison systems have gotten vaccinated. The whole goal obviously is to eventually get to herd immunity. Does that push us from getting closer? We're, we're never going to get to herd immunity, Brittany, and that's a reality. And then when you start talking about uh, a vulnerable population like uh, somebody in prison or detained in a jail system, you know, you have to realize that historically our country has uh, always treated uh, these individuals as uh, priors of society. And in fact, that some of the medical experimentation uh, were performed on prisoners without their informed consent, uh, period, end of story. And so there's going to be that lack of trust in the system as long as there's that lack of trust in the system and the, uh, the prisoners or detainees are not informed or educated about the SARS virus itself, how do you treat it, you know, what is the long-term consequences, you're always going to have that source of the population that just does not believe in the system because of the way the system is treated other individuals. That is why it's very important that if you're going to try to get herd immunity, you're going to have to sit down with each uh, prison system, especially the federal uh, prison system, and have a town hall and explain to the prison what the vaccine is capable of doing, what are the side effects, why should you 
get a vaccine so they can have some type of informed consent to make that decision for themselves and that will help out the society and also help to mitigate and contain the, the virus itself. And Dr. Rowland, really quickly before I let you go, do you think these new incentives that they're offering some of the inmates to get the vaccine will basically help folks say, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and get it? Well, I mean, anytime, you know, you put an incentive in anything, it, it could be, you know, giving people free ice cream, free coffee, or even a lottery like they're doing in the state of Ohio, that can be an incentive. But, you know, I think at the end of the day, people are going to have to make, and these folks that are in that system or any system that has an incentive, you're going to have to make the best decision for yourself. Is it is it is it possible that, you know, if I got $1,000 that I would be more interested in getting a vaccination? Yeah, I mean, who wouldn't? But at the end of the day, folks, what it comes down to is that we have to work as a uniform society. We have to have humanity where everybody in the world, that kid in the, in the, in the, in the jungles of Peru, or that kid in the jungles of Africa, or that, that kid in the Indian Reservation in the United States, or that prison detainee has to have the ability to have access and have accurate information based off the science and medicine to make the best decision for themselves. Because if we don't work as a, as a society, we're never ever going to get to herd immunity and the virus itself is going to continue to do what it's going to do. And I understand that people feel comfortable now that the numbers are kind of low, but this is getting ready for the storm because I can promise you in September, October, November comes, we're going to be back in the same situation again. So people still need to make sure they're not complying and understanding the science and medicine of the virus. And we are all hoping for some solutions to this, right? Well, Dr. Lane Rowling, thank you so much again for joining us. We appreciate your time every Sunday when you show up here on BNC.